and welcome to the channel. Here I share scareful stories, stories to make you scared, make you think, make you wonder, and maybe, just maybe, make you a little more careful. If you like what you see, please give the video a like, leave a comment down below, and consider subscribing to the channel. And now, the scareful story of Aaron Foster and Jeremy Betchel, and how their case was solved by YouTuber Exploring with Nug. Aaron Foster and Jeremy Betchel grew up together in Sparta, Tennessee. Born in 1992, Aaron grew up in a family with a younger brother. According to her parents, she was a perfectionist and a perfectionist with everything she did. She grew up helping her dad with his mechanical fixes and projects and had set her sights on becoming an airplane mechanic after high school. Unfortunately, she didn't live long enough to be able to make those dreams come true. Jeremy Betchel was also born in 1992. His mom described him as kind-hearted and even though his parents' divorce was difficult, he was more or less your normal teenager. On the night of April 3rd, 2000, Aaron and Jeremy picked up Aaron's brother from an arcade before heading off to a party. It was a weeknight, but Aaron's mom had given her permission to go over to her friend's house. The last sighting of Aaron and Jeremy was around 10 p.m. Witnesses reported seeing them in Aaron's two-door black Pontiac Grand Am. When neither teen returned home, their parents became concerned and the pair was reported missing a few days later. As happens in so many cases of missing teenagers, investigators theorized that the two teens had voluntarily left their lives. Their parents disagreed. Neither had a compelling reason to leave and neither had taken any belongings, including saved money with them. As the years passed and nothing was heard from either of them and their social security numbers weren't used, even investigators began to agree that odds were the teens did not run away to begin new lives. In a small town where everyone knew everyone and everyone knew Aaron and Jeremy, rumors began to swirl. Stories were told that the teens were murdered and their bodies dumped in a well. Over the years, acting on these stories, police dug up multiple wells searching for answers to the mystery of the missing teens. No evidence was ever found. That was until YouTuber Jeremy Sides got involved. Sides' YouTube channel, Exploring with Nug, says that it features river treasure hunting, including scuba diving, metal detecting, and treasure hunting. And if you watch his videos, many are just that, side searching rivers for lost treasures such as coins, old bottles and cans, guns, and all sorts of weird things that ends up in the waterways. At some point though, Sides added searching for lost vehicles and people into the mix. And thank goodness that he did. Aaron and Jeremy are not the only missing person Sides has helped recover. When he came across the story of Aaron and Jeremy's disappearance, he felt it was very likely that they and the car ended up in a body of water. He traveled to Sparta in November of 2021 and using sonar technology began searching for any signs of there being a car in the water. From looking at the location of the house where the party was and their homes, he began by searching a lake that was in between those points. He posted a video of that search on November 24th, 2021, and although he did find a car, it wasn't Aaron's black Pontiac. At the end of the video, he says that he'll return to Sparta at some point to search a river that was also on their route home. After he posted the video, the Sheriff of White County saw it and decided to review the case. From the review, he determined that it was likely Aaron and Jeremy were traveling home on Highway 84, which runs close to the Cap Killer River. Sheriff Steve Page then contacted Sides on Facebook and suggested that upon his return, that he check the river. On November 30th, 2021, Sides returned to search a few more locations, including the Cap Killer River. His video posted on December 4th, 2021, documents him searching the Cane Hollow Road boat ramp, the Three Island Road boat ramp, and finally the Cap Killer River. He's only on the river scanning for about 20 minutes when he spots a car in his screen. Watching the picture come up of a car sitting at the bottom of the river sends chills right through you. Because it's getting late in the day, Sides returns the next day to dive down and check the vehicle. I've linked the video below so you can go check it out. It is heart-wrenching to see him identify the license plate from Aaron's car. 
There's the excitement of solving a 20-year mystery, and yet the harsh reality that these poor kids were taken too soon and that it took far too long to find them. What I love about the video is that when Sides calls the sheriff to let him know he found the vehicle, the sheriff is so appreciative. When he comes out, he gives Sides a hug. I think sometimes sheriffs and police are reluctant to have other people investigating their cases and are concerned that having someone solve a case will make them look bad, but this time, all there was was appreciation. Some reports state that the river had been searched when they disappeared. However, 20 years ago, the technology to scan the water wasn't as advanced as it is today, and many counties still don't have sonar technology. Remains were found inside the vehicle and sent to the coroner's office for identification. Aaron's dad told Inside Edition that it kind of seems like almost a dream and added that he and his son, Aaron's younger brother, have fished in that river many times. With the car being over 13 feet down and in very murky water, it's not as though the car would have been visible, but it's still chilling to think of them fishing right above the location of the vehicle. Neither family had held a funeral for their child, perhaps wanting to hold open the hope that they were alive and well somewhere. Aaron's dad said, now we just have to deal with losing this glimmer of hope we had that they may have been alive somewhere. Now we're sure that they're not. So it's a different hurt. There's something different about it. I can't explain it. A funeral is now planned for Aaron. Jeremy's mother died four years ago, never knowing what had happened to her son. His dad told the Washington Post that although the discovery has given him a sense of closure, that it's like losing him all over again. And it just shattered my heart again. From where the car was found and the road they were traveling on, it appears as though they possibly came around a corner, lost control of the car, and ended up in the river. The video shows the car being lifted out of the river over a guardrail, but it's presumed that the guardrail was not in place in 2000. So now Aaron and Jeremy can finally be laid to rest. What do you think about this solved case and about YouTubers going out and looking for missing cars and people? Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this scareful story. And until next time, stay safe and stay careful.